Welcome to the lecture series of Switching Theory and Logic Design. In this class, we are going to discuss the concept of Johnson counter. Where the Johnson counter is an extension of a ring counter. Let us see about Johnson counter. The Johnson counter is also called twisted ring counter or switch tile ring counter. Twisted ring counter or switch tile counter. So this is seems to be like as a twisted ring counter. That is at the last flip flop output, the outputs were twisting. That is in the previous ring counter, we have connected the last flip flop output Q3 output were connected to the first flip flop input. Now we are connecting the Q3 bar output to the first flip flop input. So this is the only one modification we are performing in this Johnson counter. So it is very simple counter with compared to the Rigo counter. Right. The last flip flop out complemented output is connected to the first flip flop input. So this is also an this is also an application of a shift register. Right. Let us see the four bit Johnson counter or twisted ring counter. Right. So coming to here, we have again four flip flops we have taken as a uh, deep flip flops as per the this is a shift register application okay so four uh, registers we have taken and same clock signal and clear signals we have connected coming to that the first flip flop output is we have connected to the second flip flop input and the th second flip flop output is connected to the second third flip flop input and the third flip flop output is connected to the fourth flip flop input and the fourth flip flop output uh, we have represented as q3 but here the Q3 bar where the Q3 bar is connected to the the Q3 bar is connected to the first flip flop input that is G0. So this is the one modification we did the, we did here. Right. Let us see the truth table for this function. Right. Now we will draw the truth table for this function. Here clock signal is there. Next Q3, Q2, Q1. Q0. Four outputs are available. So when I am giving the first clock pulse, first clock pulse, uh, before giving the first clock pulse, I have kept the D0 value is equal to 1 and D1 value is equal to 0, D2 0, D3 0. So I have given 1 triple 0 as the input. So after applying the clock signal, the same inputs are I am getting here 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so now Q3 is equal to 0, here Q3 is equal to 0 and Q3 bar is equal to 1. Now Q3 is equal to 0, Q3 bar is equal to 1. Now this Q3 bar is connected to the D0 input. The Q3 bar, the last flip flop complement output is connected to the first flip flop input. Okay, right. Now the inputs for the D0 is equal to 1. D1 is equal to 1. By why? Because previously Q0 is equal to 1. So the Q0 is connected to the D1. So for this reason, here also the input is equal to 1. Okay, right. Here the input is 0. Here the input is 0. So the inputs here is double one double zero. Right. Now after applying these inputs, and the same outputs I will get got here. Right. So applying the second clock signal here Q0 is equal to 1. This one is this output and this one output also 1. Next 0 0. So this is the second clock pass. Next going to the third clock pass. So when you are going to the third clock pass, so here Q3 value is equal to 0. When, whenever you have Q3 is equal to 0, then the D0 is equal to 1. Why? Because the complemented output of the last flip flop is connected to the first flip flop. If Q3 is equal to 0, Q3 bar is connected to the D0. So the 1 is connected to here. Now the output is 0, 1, 1, 1. So this is a shifting operation. Next coming to the next clock pulse. Here Q3 again 0. Now the values are shifting to here. Here 1, 1, 1, 1. So this is the last count. So after completion of this count, now there for the next clock pulse. So see here for the next clock pulse. Now Q3 is equal to 1. That is Q3 bar is equal to 0. Now that 0 is the input at D0. If D0 input is equal to 0, after applying the clock signal, the 0 is reflected to the output. Now it is 0, now it is 1, 1, 1. So this is the mode. For the next clock pulse, the output is 1, 1, 0, 0. And next clock pulse, the output is 1, 0, 0, 0. For the next clock pulse, the outputs are the 0, 0, 0, 0. 
all zeros we got here all zeros we will get here so see here uh, after this uh, uh, clock pulse so now all the outputs are zeros now after giving the next clock pulse the output is 0 0 0 1 okay right so first clock pulse second clock pulse third clock pulse fourth clock pulse fifth and this is sixth seventh and eighth and ninth so see here for the first clock pulse i have given triple zero one at the ninth clock pulse i got triple zero one operation so nearly eight clock pulses are here we have different values uh, we have started from triple zero one and it is ended with the four zeros after four zeros you got triple zero one the same configuration we have represented here see here for the zeroth clock pulse i have represented all zeros for the first clock pulse i have got the output triple zero one so see here if it is output is zero this is zero this is zero this is zero okay four outputs are zeros so after giving the clock pulse so here the q3 is equal to zero but q3 bar is connected this one is uh, here the input for the first clock pulse so after giving the clock pulse q0 is equal to one so that is we have mentioned here q0 is equal to one q1 is equal to zero q2 is equal to zero q3 is equal to zero so triple zero one that is the first clock pulse output second clock pulse out double zero double one third clock pulse zero triple one fourth clock pulse four ones Fifth clock was triple one zero. Sixth clock was double one double zero. Seventh clock was one triple zero. Eighth clock was all zeros. So see here, oh, the first zero the clock pulse is four zeros, and eighth clock pulse is four zeros. So totally eight clock pulses, eight different values we are representing here. So the first combination decimal value zero. Next combination decimal value one. Next three. Next seven. Next fifteen. Next. Uh, here we have the value is equal to 14, next 12, next 8, next 0, 1, 3, like this order is again we are getting here. So this is the shift uh, Johnson shift uh, Johnson counter operation, which is uh, application for the shift registers. Right. Now we have to draw the true table for this uh, Johnson ring uh, Johnson counter. Uh, twisted ring counter so see here uh, i have drawn this diagram for the 9, 18 clock pulses so uh, we have mentioned the first combination is four zeros so this is the four zeros here we have mentioned four zeros so this is zero 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 okay next triple zero one so zero 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 one triple zero one configuration right next configuration double zero double one double zero double one right next see here zero triple one zero triple one here we have next one 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 all ones combination next zero one 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 zero zero one one zero 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 one zero 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 totally here we, here we have seven clock cycles so zero one two three seven sorry zero one three seven fifteen fourteen twelve eight 0, 1, 3, 7, 15, 14, 12, 8, 0, 1, 3, 7, 15, 14, 12, 8, 0, 1. Like that we have the counts scenario. Right? And you can observe the behavior. The ones are shifting in this direction. The ones are shifting in this direction. And again, the next zeros are shifting in this direction. And again, ones are shifting in this direction. And zeros are shifting in this direction. Okay, so this is the behavior of Johnson counter or twisted ring counter. Right? So, ring counter and twisted ring counter are we can call Johnson counter. These two counters are the applications of shift registers. Okay, thank you.